Most years have 365 days, but leap years are special. They have 366. The extra day comes in February. February normally has 28 days, but in leap years, we add another day, February 29th. It is called a leap day. How often do leap years come around? Every four years. So what if you're born on a leap day? Do you have to wait four years for your next birthday? Good question. We heard about this 28-year-old leap year baby who had fun on both leap year and non-leap year birthdays. On years where there is no February 29th, he has a two-day birthday festival. But in leap years, he celebrates by having a party in the style of the age he would be if you just counted all of his leap year birthdays. So when he turned 28, he had a bouncy castle, lawn games, balloons, and streamers like he was seven years old. Aw, why couldn't I have been born on a leap day? Why do we have leap years anyway? What's the point? The reason is that without leap years, our calendar starts to drift out of sync with the seasons. It shifts by, you guessed it, one day every four years. After 700 years, our season would be completely out of sync. For those of us in the Northern Hemisphere, that would mean December would be in the summer and July would be in the winter. 700 years sounds like an awfully long time. What's the big deal? It became a very big deal in ancient Rome when their major holidays started to fall in the wrong seasons. Imagine an ice festival in the middle of summer or a harvest festival in the dead of winter. As you can see, it was a very big problem. To fix this, in 46 BC, over 2,000 years ago, the emperor Julius Caesar adopted leap years from the Egyptian calendar. He made a few changes and called it the Julian calendar. I know I'm going to regret asking this, but how did humans figure out leap years? We aren't sure exactly who figured out leap years. It might have been the Babylonians. It might have been the ancient Greeks. We do know around 100 BC, the Greek astronomer Hipparchus published a book entitled On the Length of a Year, where he calculated that a year is a little longer than 365 days. He tracked the sun's movement in the sky for a whole year and calculated that it took 365 days, 5 hours, and 48 minutes to return to the same position in the sky. His calculations were actually pretty good. Even though Hipparchus thought the sun was orbiting around the Earth, his calculation of the length of a year was almost exactly the same as ours today. A year is one complete trip around the sun. And that trip takes the Earth roughly 365 days and six hours. Since our calendar year doesn't add those extra six hours, we start the new year six hours too soon every year. After four years, this adds up to 24 hours or one day. So we add a leap year to make things match back up. This keeps our calendar almost perfectly in sync with the seasons.